everyone, welcome to my channel. Have you ever wanted to get into the FPV drone hobby? You know, when you fly with goggles, really fast drones, but it was too expensive for you? Well, guess what? Beta FPV has saved your bacon. Check this out. They got these goggles here. These are called the VRO2s and these are like $49, 49 bucks. And they have the radio here. This here is called the Light uh, SE radio and it's like $39. So $39, $49, all you need after that is the drone. All right, so let's start off with the radio itself because it has the most features and it's the thing that I find the most interesting. So this is the box it comes in. Nothing exciting inside the box. All you're gonna find is a set of instructions, which are really good instructions, by the way. They're more or less specifications to tell you all about this radio controller. Next, taking a quick look at the radio controller here, you have joysticks, mine's a mode two, so that means the throttle is on the left. And if you look at the very front, you have switches for the FPV hobby. The bottom switches are all one click, 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 on or off. Basically, that's what it is. You can assign them to anything you want. And the top switches are three clicks. So that would be your like mode switch. So you can go in uh, angle mode, horizon mode, acro mode. So watch, click, click. So I have two clicks. So one, two, three, one, two, three. There we go. I went too fast on that one. So that's your clicky mode. Then in the back section here that faces you, you have a USB-C connector and an audio out, I believe it is. And you use that USB-C to charge up the controller. And after you charge it up fully, this thing will work for eight hours on a full charge. But that's not the good thing. Just think, if you buy this controller for $39, the USB-C port also acts as a connection to your computer to fly flight sims. I'll show you that in a bit. Finally, if I flip it over and look at the back on the bottom here, you have a setup button and a bind button. You're not really going to use the setup button too many times, but you will use the bind button because this is actually kind of a multi-protocol radio. So if I look at the instructions here, it says uh, you can connect to a receiver in a drone that has FR Sky. That can be FR Sky D16 or D8, which is pretty much the most common. You can also connect to a Futaba receiver with this baby and a Banyan. I've never used Banyan. B-A-Y-A-N-G, it says. Yeah, I've never used that. But anyways, apparently you can. And the cool thing is there's no display on this thing. There's no, there's no anything. So how do you know which receiver to connect to? Well, it goes by the color of this button. So when you turn it on, it will flash red. And if it flashes red once, it means you're in FR Sky FCC mode. And if it does it twice, then I think it, then I think you're in European FCC mode. I'm not really sure, but the instruction manual says it. And then you go into all the other ones, you know, like Futaba and whatever. So that really keeps it pretty darn simple. So out of the box in my country of Canada, the one sent to me uh, came with one flashing red. So it was already set up for FR Sky FCC. And I connected it to my little Petrel drone here, which is an HGLRC drone. It's not even a beta FPV drone, but it has an XM Plus receiver in it because that's the most common. And uh, this connects to it, no problem. So if you look at this, what is this radio lacking then? Because you're thinking 39 bucks, it's gotta be lacking something. Well, the first thing is the gimbals. They're not Hall Effect gimbals like on, do I have one here? It is right here. This one I reviewed recently, the Jumper T-Lite. This here is like full featured compared to this, but this thing is like 70 some odd dollars and this is like $39. So you see the difference already. But I will say even for the gimbals being, you know, no brand name, they're okay, they work okay. You would never be able to use this to connect to uh, an RC airplane or some other RC product. It's pretty much only for the FPV hobby. No trim controls whatsoever. Also, you'll notice there's no antenna on this any place. So uh, if I look at the instruction here, it says it has 100 milliwatt transmitting power, which trust me guys, 100 milliwatt transmitting power is pretty darn good for beginners. So I guess it's not too bad. No audio controls on this, you know, like some of the other radios you see me, I flick switches and they go horizon mode, angle mode, arm motors, and all these other things. Nothing like that. So it's it's pretty much silent. So two things I'll show you with the radio is one, uh, I've already bound it to my little Petrel drone here, HGLRC, and I flew this outside and I had no issues and I'll show you the video from that coming up. The next thing I'll show you is I'll connect it to my laptop right here and I'll show you, you can play a sim, it's so simple. I've uh, actually, this 
laptop is a PC and I do have Macs and I've tried it on a Mac and a PC and it works, it works perfectly. No flaws whatsoever. But before I get into all that, let me show you the goggles. So for the goggles, this is the box here. Nothing exciting and inside the box on the goggles, you really get the goggles and a strap. So I've connected the strap to the goggles already. Now the first thing, let me tell you about the goggles. There's three buttons on the side and I'll show you how they work in one second. Uh, oh, sorry, there's four buttons on the side, three here and a power button. And I'll show you how they work. There's nothing else. There's no antenna on the outside. So you're like, where's the antennas? It's built in and the range is pretty decent. It's quite sensitive. There's no DVR. You know, on some of these goggles, you have a spot that you can put a micro SD card in and you can record the video that goes into the goggles so you can play it back for yourself later. Not included on this one, but on the good side, uh, you don't have to add a battery to this. Some of the other ones, you have to add a battery. This one, you don't add a battery. It's built in and fully charged. It gives you two hours of display on your screen. And if I look on the Beta FPV website, let me see what it says about it. It says the screen is 4.3 inches and it's an 800 by 480 display. It says super high definition brightness, LCD, blah, blah, blah. Nothing exciting. Doesn't tell me the frequency, like how powerful it is for that antenna. Uh, all it says is a built-in, super sensitive, 5.8 gigahertz, 40 channel receiver and with race band. So it does have race band. I can see it in the screen. There is race band in there. So that's pretty much it. So I can, I'll talk you through it. I've already done a test of these goggles and let me just talk you through how it works. So on the side, you have a power button. You flick that, they power on. And then the next thing, when you look in the screen, if you don't have any sort of reception, you just get snow. But if you hit the center button, which says S, S is for search, but it's also for menu. If you press it once, you're gonna get a menu and that's what the menu looks like. So in that menu, you have six bands and you have eight channels and if you hit the middle s button again you can go into search mode and it will search every channel and it will pick up and show you which channels are receiving a signal and it will stop on them when it finds one so as you can see very much designed for beginners not a lot of buttons to mess you up it's basically turn them on hit the scan button let it find the signal from your drone it will show you the image that's it there's nothing else for you to do put them on your head and go flying now take a look at me look at the size of these glasses i'm wearing watch this they do not fit over my glasses. So if you're somebody who wears glasses and you have big spectacles, then uh, you can't use these. Now for some of you who have a very minor prescription, like a minus one, minus two, or a plus one, plus two, you might be able to take your glasses off, put them on, and it will be perfectly in focus or pretty close to focus. But uh, for other people like myself, no, nah, I tried it. It's, it's too blurry and you can't adjust anything on it. So unless you have small spectacles, they do make at some drugstores spectacles that just sit on your nose. So you put them on your nose and you can fit goggles over top perfectly fine. They're like little reading glasses. They come in a little box. Most drugstores have them. If you put those on for your prescription, like, you know, plus one, plus two, I don't know, whatever. And you, you should be able to fit this over top. No problem. All right. So the next thing I want to show you with both of these is I went outside. It's free cold here. I took the little Petrel, took all this and I took it for a flight. And what I did is I flew with my fat sharks on. I recorded the image of my fat sharks. I stuck a GoPro in front of this to show you what the image would look like if you had it on your head. The GoPro is not going to give you the true image because the GoPro is very wide. So you see the sides and the top and the bottom. When you put this on your head, all you'll see is like in a movie theater, everything comes in, your brain only focuses on the image. So it's a different view, but overall it went well. Here's the video. Here we have the current temperature outside, minus nine and uh, sunny. It's a wee bit cold out here. Let's clear a path. Things full of snow already. Put all the switches down, power this on. There we go. And it's gonna connect to this when I plug this in. These two should be connected now. And uh, let me just make sure, does it arm? Yep, perfect. So since I wear prescription glasses, I can't wear these goggles because they don't fit over top. You need goggles like Fat Sharks or something that can adjust for your prescription and these ones do. So I can take my glasses off and fit them over top. So I'm gonna record the video in the Fat Sharks and I'm gonna show you what it looks like by putting a GoPro in front of uh, the goggles here. So you'll see inside. So let's see what that does. So I've got my gloves on. I don't know how well I'm gonna feel the joysticks, but uh, let's see. So I've got an acro mode. There's no audio cues. I'm gonna arm it. There we go. And uh, let's go. Flying around my little area. I have a little bit of battery time. 
So what I'm finding is these joysticks are really good. They're not as good as like hull uh, sensors. Oops, I'm using too much power, it says. They're not as good as like the hull sensor gimbals, but uh, yeah, for the price, you can't beat it. That's for sure. Come down nice and low to the ground. There we are. Not bad. I can control it nicely here. All right, so let's try this. I'm going to put it in angle mode. Where's my angle mode? There's angle mode. So there we go. I could switch it into angle mode while flying. What angle mode allows me to do is it takes it out of acro and it adjusts the angle of the drone so I can fly slower. So you see how slow I'm flying here? So with this controller in angle mode, come nice and low to the ground. There I am there. Go smoothly over me. Yeah, I do find the joysticks are pretty darn decent. For the price, you can't go wrong with this. This looks pretty good. And yes, I'm flying with the low battery still, so I'll bring it back and uh, let's go back inside. Let's see if I can land on the back of my Jeep here. I'm gonna go right up top here. No, I better not, in case I smash into the window. All right, so let's bring it around and land at my feet. There we go. <laughs> That was in the snow. I did get it at my feet though. It's right here, right there. <laughs> there it is. So from that flight, you know, everything's felt fine. It feels good in my hands. But then again, I've been flying so long. I can fly anything. You'll see some reviewers will usually complain about controllers and other things. I don't think they've been flying very long. Like I've been flying as long as I have. Everything just feels natural in the hands. So I'm probably not a good judge of <laughs> controllers and stuff. But I can tell you that for me, for somebody as flying as long as I have, using a $39 radio, it uh, there was no issues. It was perfectly fine. I could even find, you know, I could change the modes while I was flying. And that's what I wanted to see if I could. And yeah, I could. The joysticks, to me, they were fine. They're not as good as Hall Effect gimbals because I'm so used to Hall Effect gimbals are even higher quality. But, uh, you know, for a beginner, you're not going to notice. You're not going to notice at all. So this is a really good buy. So now what I'm going to show you is, uh, let me just get rid of the goggles here and the drone. And let me show you. I got a camera. You probably saw it sitting right here. It's pointing at my laptop. So if I plug this in, I just got to find a USB port. I'm going to show you how you use this as a SIM. Because if you already have a really good radio, like I have a pile of really good ones in the back, then... Uh, just buy this to play on Sims. Then you don't have to use your other radios. So for $39, you get a nice uh, little controller here to use on Sims. So all you have to do to make this work with your computer is power it on. So I'll power it on, make a sound. There we go. Blue light right here. And then you just plug it in. As soon as it plugs in, it knows, since it's connected to a computer, and make sure you use a data cable here, it knows that you must want to use it as a joystick, an external joystick. So this is a PC and I have used it on a Mac. So what I want to do is get my controller in the frame so you can see at the same time, I'm kind of looking at an angle here. So anyways, here we go. Let me just push this up so you can see I'm doing both things and let's go in. I'm going to load. Uh, I'm at a park. All right, let's go up. We're going to try to go through this play set. I'm doing this on an angle so I can just see it kind of crooked like. There we go. Going through, going through, going through, going through. Yay, I made it. So this is pretty simple if you want to fly Sims. All right, I'll put a link to this Sim below so you can check it out yourself and see if it's something for you. And as you're flying here, if you hit the M button, you'll go into acro mode. So now down here it says acro and I'm about to hit the tree. So I'll just move out of the way. But with acro mode, you can do like little rolls, nice little slow ones like you do in real acro mode. And I'll do them the other way. There we go, just in case you didn't see that. Not bad, little 39, whoop, I'm gonna crash in the trees. Anyways, I'm gonna crash in the trees here. <laughs> little $39 thing to use as a simulator controller. So pretty darn sweet. Let me show you one more thing that Beta FPV sent me and it's dirt cheap as well. So say you buy this and you buy this and then you go buy any FPV drone you want that has analog video. You can also get yourself this, I can't even pick it up here. This is a ring that you fly through. So if you get yourself a little tiny whoop, you can fly through. Here's one of the size of my drone. You go outside and you fly through these things. These things are dirt cheap. I think they're like $29. I could be totally wrong, but Beta FPV. Oh, oh, oh. This one was open, Beta FPV. Sent me, I got metal ever falling everywhere. They sent me a pile of them here because I, I think there's like four in a package or five. I'm not really sure. And uh, yeah, there's metal coming out everywhere. So anyways, you set these up outside or in your house, hang them from the ceiling or put them in, stick them in the ground because they have these little metal pegs here. There's lots of metal pieces. And anyway, you just practice and fly your drone through all these things. So I'll put a link 
below. To, now I got it all over the place here. Let's put it around my head. So I'll put a link below to these things and uh, you can check them out. And I'll also put a link below to the goggles. Check those out. And the radio controller for 39 bucks. So it's pretty decent. So for this, for this, for th these things, and uh, I don't know, get yourself an FPV drone too, and you're all set. Some FPV drones, the small ones, the tiny whoops, come with the batteries and the battery charger, so you'd be all set there. If not, buy yourself any type of drone and then buy yourself a battery charger. I do not have one to show you here, but I have a million reviews of battery chargers on my channel. And then just get yourself some batteries to match for your drone. All right, guys, if you have any questions on any of this, then uh, post your comments below. And like I said, all links are below to where all this stuff is and it's dirt cheap. Thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for more drone videos coming up in the future. All right, guys, take care. Bye.